okay so in the next hour or so uh, we'll start working on the front end uh, of the web uh, architecture hmm? right now we have the basics for creating very simple web pages with sessions and with the uh, connection to database uh, we will now split the path in two directions one towards the front end uh, today with style sheets uh, and later on with the uh, javascript and ajax all the front-end technologies uh, that makes uh, make websites nice to look and dynamic and uh, uh, say programmable on the other hand uh, next week uh, on monday we'll uh, start uh, working on the, on the server side in a different context where the client uh, will be no longer a browser so a browser navigating a website uh, but we will use a web server as a tool as a technology for letting different computers to communicate to exchange information among uh, each other okay so the web technology will be an integration technology not just an uh, say um, a website development technique hmm? so we need both uh, direction because on one hand uh, we need to be able to create complex uh, user interfaces and on the other hand uh, we need to be able to exchange data and information between different machines mm -hmm. uh, so the same the same technologies that we learned up to now are still valid but they will be used in a very different way okay but let's start uh, uh, saying something more about uh, the front end uh, well we will start with very simple uh, stuff uh, like uh, maybe some of you already know that already have uh, now, I had a look on this uh, when creating your websites. Uh, uh, how the front end, uh, how the HTML pages in the front end uh, uh, modify their appearance, their style, their colors, their fonts, and so on. So, the technology for doing this uh, uh, is not HTML itself. HTML does not have uh, the possibility of specifying uh, complex layouts, uh, uh, sizing, spacing, and so on actually it is there but it's highly uh, recommended not to use it because it's very uh, old kind of technologies uh, right now the way of specifying the layout and the appearance actually of a web page is using uh, style sheets and style sheets uh, are called css cascading style sheets uh, because uh, there are uh, um, instructions over instruction over instructions that cascade on top of each other so every new instruction just applies on top of what uh, the previous instructions did uh, to the whole page context so this, this is the, the reason why there is a, this strange cascading word css are very say mature uh, whole and uh, mature technologies technology and uh, today we are working basically with the CSS level 3 and uh, but we don't probably need uh, to go uh, into details about the te the, the uh, official documents so basically what uh, we want to do is to specify or modify or change the appearance of a web page or of a portion of a web page uh, so imagine we had our very stupid example that we played with in the last uh, couple of uh, classes let's run it and assume we want to change something like I don't know the font or the color of the title or the layout or the font of the or the size of this picture and so on so this is the content the HTML is very boring about the content it's all black and white it's all uh, on one single font and so on it's all uh, uh, left aligned because HTML just describes the content of a page to make a page uh, better looking we need to apply some styles two different parts of the page and uh, uh, applying styles means applying a rule to modify that part of the page and these rules in CSS are made in this way so CSS is a, 
a set of rules a long list long or short but it may be a long list of rules and every rule is made of two parts a selector and they call a set of declarations so what to modify there's the selector and how can we modify it so in this case the selector is h1 i want to modify all the h1 elements in html in the whole page so in this case this title is an h1 component in html so the style that i apply will modify all the declarations will modify the style of that paragraph and not of the rest of the page so just the, these rules apply only to the selected elements selector means we select which elements need to be modified and how this how does the modification happen the modification happens by changing some attributes so in the declaration i have a list separated by semicolons of uh, properties and the actual value of a property another property another value for that property and so on so we have uh, the fact that the title is black is the default value of the property color for the text so if i modify the property color for that test then the test will become blue for example or any other color i choose so the browser applies by default uh, a set of uh, values to all the possible properties that different elements in the page have naturally they possess some properties and the default value is applied with css i can modify these defaults okay um, and uh, when i apply uh, a rule the rule is always applied by taking into account the structure of the html code so if i apply a rule on this uh, table for example the rule will cascade down and it will be applied to every element inside behind and inside the, and inside the table so if i apply something at the body level that will apply to every element in the page if i apply something on this element here this span element that contains only a small text that will apply only to this text so we have different kinds of selectors and the selectors select uh, one or more elements in the page and whatever property we modify on this element it will be inherited by the lower elements unless we are or we, we override that rule by applying another rule to those elements it will change again the value so the browser actually makes many passes many applications of each rule cascades the, them down to every element and finally it computes the attributes for each final element for each final node before painting it into the screen hmm? and uh, uh, so all the styles are inherited along the html trees or along the nesting uh, of the html page and if more, more than one rule matches a specific element the more specific one wins okay or of course uh, if there is something that specified something at the p level then it will override the general rule that will apply to body level there actually the the criteria the algorithm for deciding which rule wins is is quite complex because it takes into account a lot of different uh, uh, the conditions but in general the, keep it in simple if i have a rule that selects for all the body the attribute color is green color is the property for the color of, of the text as i said so all the text inside the page will become green so it matches it matches the body element and it's inherited by all the by this rule styles are inherited along the tree i will be inherited that rule by all the uh, nested elements but then if i define that h1 has a color red this rule this rule will overwrite so actually on h1 there are two different rules now that want to specify the color pro the color attribute 
so there is a conflict and in this case the more specific selector h1 is more specific than body wings and h1 will be uh, sorry red will be the final color of h1 while the rest of the page will be green okay um, if uh, instead of color the second rule would have changed an, a different property i don't know font size then there will be no conflict and the two rules will be merged so uh, we would have uh, h1 we would be still green with size uh, with a larger or smaller size depending on the on the value of the selector so actually this uh, uh, mechanism is repeated for every property that is mentioned in the rule and every property is processed independently for the others hmm? so it's actually a quite powerful language as it's a pattern matching language i match sets of elements uh, that are hierarchically related uh, and i apply some modifications uh, to some properties inside those elements hmm? and uh, <coughs> there are different places where i can write these rules uh, the more okay the there is also, there are always some default styles coming from the browser so every element already has a set of defined styles always okay we see that we can see that in the inspector if i have a look uh, at the this title for example we can uh so i know rules here sorry how do i show all of them i don't remember no okay sorry i we come back to that we, with some css logic because i don't remember to show the the browser defined ones but anyway every element already has some browser some values for every property defined by the browser then we as web page creators can define some author styles author meaning the person who creates the html page and these authors can these styles can be uh, internal or sorry, external to the web page or internal embedded in the html of the page we will always use the external form meaning we store the css rules in a separate file and not inside the html file okay but these are have the same importance and they rule and they have this cascading rules uh, whether rules are more or less specific than each other different uh, cascading uh, mechanisms uh, apply but we don't need to to be to, to you know to learn this uh, mechanism in detail and finally there are some inline styles inline styles are styles that are applied on a specific html element directly on the element itself so if i, I could write sorry where is the template here uh, on the title i can use an attribute called style and uh, this attribute can contain some specific declaration to apply to this element so for example i could write color red so these are inline styles styles that are inlined inside a specific element of course it will be very painful to work like, work like this especially if we want to maintain some sort of consistency across the whole page it's always better to have uh, to use uh, as much as possible these external author uh, styles hmm? that we will learn to create on a separate file uh, these arrows means that the, the later so the inline files prevail over external files which prevail over browser styles in general hmm? so we always are redefining when we go more specific we are redefining the more generic or the or the default values um, these user styles is a feature which is not really much 
used, used. It, it's there the idea is that if i have some specific need i can instruct my browser to always apply some styles to every web page that it visit so maybe i don't see very well i tell the browser always increase the text size so it will be a a modification of the default browser styles that is applied before the html page uh, applies its own uh, its own styles so it can pre-modify some styles uh, uh, by letting the web page start from different defaults actually so it's a way of changing the defaults for a specific user it's not very used as i say because uh, for applying a style i need to quite to know the structure of the page and so it's not very easy to create a, a generic user style that will apply to every web page i visit with my browser so it's there but it's not very used okay so how can we use an external style sheet okay it's very easy we just create one file with extension css on our web server so in flash that would be on the static directory because it's just a text file it doesn't need to be interpreted by python it's not a template it's just a static file with the extension of css and then we call this style file from the head portion of our template page of our html page so in the html page we say that the, to this html we need to uh, attach to link a style sheet uh, that lies in this file referenced referenced by style.css we just add this and the browser will load after loading the html of the page we load the css file and we start applying the rules uh, to the html so in our case what we could do so let's, let's get rid of this ugly inline style and we say that we want to create in the static directory a new Sorry, CSS file style.css for example you can call it however you want of course and you see that uh, PyCharm recognizes uh, with this icon the specific syntax of CSS and we can decide that for example the title must be red hmm? so we define that h1 the h1 element uh, has a color a text color that we want to be red semicolon mm -hmm. so it's a very simple property after that we in want to include the style sheet from our index page by adding a link uh, statement uh, uh, we are linking a file with the relationship of style sheet so the relationship between this page and the other file is that this second is a style sheet for this one the syntax of the style sheet is uh, CSS and the name of the file is uh, and then we need to, to pro to in, in in flask to link dynamically to the name of the file so it's a static file with the file name of uh, style.css closing quote closing parenthesis maybe let's split this line here so that we can read it better and then we need to close this tag so link relationship style sheet type css reference to the file uh, style.css that lies in the static directory that should be enough for pulling in the css file and for the browser to apply it and to color in red our title so let's try it 
we reload the server we reload the index page and we see that uh, the title changed in color so our web page now has this additional link and nothing more so we i didn't modify the page i only applied some styles on top of it and these styles are maintained in a separate file that is being read just a simple text file static text file that is being read okay so in this way we can separate the content of the page that will be well written html from the layout and appearance and the colors and the style actually uh, of the web of the web website we can keep them separated different people could work on that so what kind of uh, i don't want to see the other options we always use that and uh, let's open this page what kind of properties can we modify on different html elements actually hundreds of hundreds of properties are available colors backgrounds uh, uh, text uh, text text meaning uh, um, a text the difference between text you see text and fonts fonts is actually for the font face uh, so that arial or times or the type of font inside the font size uh, larger smaller italic bold uh, and the text is the paragraph so left aligned right aligned uh, uh, with hyphenation and so on uh, tables lists uh, so when uh, a list has ballots the form of the ballots of a list uh, the spacing uh, of the ballots between the lists uh, uh, are there are property for the for those uh, all the images the borders the transparency the uh, round corners and so on are all listed here if you go to this page so here if you go to this page you have uh, pages and pages and pages of different properties and most uh, html elements uh, has have all of these or most of these properties that can be modified so actually it's a very large uh, the mechanism is, is very simple but the possibilities are very um, are very wide actually there are uh, a lot of uh, you see there are two pages just for the border of a picture or of a form the background color uh, is a fixed color it will be an image uh, could be some repeating pa pattern and so on so you can you have uh, your it's a it's a low level language because you um, modify and you program each individual property and for doing something useful or aesthetically nice uh, you need to combine a lot of different properties you need to change a lot of different uh, uh, spacings and backgrounds and so on all together hmm? we'll see a better way of doing that rather than learning these uh, 2000 different uh, uh, properties hmm? we have a library for doing that and uh, okay so these the, all the levels of detail that you can have uh, so in the color property for example we already mentioned the, the text color if you go there you have a, an example or how that color can be provided by name by rgb value or by rgb in decimal and uh, the support from the different browser these are very basic properties so it's supported everywhere but some properties are newer so not all the browsers support them well and uh, the possible uh, values and examples and so on so it's uh, if you need to explore this part i think this page from w3 schools is uh, quite useful so uh, this is the general idea going to more detail uh, how can we really select uh, the part of the page that we want Hmm? Right, okay we already saw the basic selector which is called the element selector h1 we wrote uh, and that rules those rules will apply to every instance of an h1 so in the if in that page we have three or four different h1s uh, h1 elements all of them will become red 
and uh, if I only want the first one to become red or, or even some other content to become red even if it's an h2 and not an h1 and so on so uh, we need some more powerful selectors hmm? and uh, we have uh, the three most important types of selectors are these elements class and id an element selector is what already we are we, we already used like the body selector or the h1 selector or the p selector for the paragraphs it will apply and in css you only write it with the name of the element e stands for an element and it will apply to every html element with the name so p means all the paragraphs emg img means all the images okay as a selector then you have the id selector let's jump to the last one that uh, picks one specific element in the page you can for every html element whatever it is you can add an attribute which is called id stands for identifier of course with the name that you choose any name you choose in every html page uh, these ids must be unique so you cannot have two different elements with the same id so it's a way of identifying by name a specific html element in, a, in your page and so you can use a, a css selector that will match just only that specific element with that name with that identifier using the hash symbol hash name matches the element with the identifier corresponding to the name so in that way i can apply a rule to a specific element in the page for example in our page we have this uh, copyright line which is just normally a paragraph but maybe we want to write it a bit smaller and uh, uh, and uh, in italic form so that it stands out from the rest of the page and so but it's the only, the only one that will need to be uh, to have this uh, sort of style so you can apply an id footer for example so i call footer this paragraph footer becomes the name of this specific paragraph and so i can apply some rules that apply only to this footer element maybe i want it to be lighter so maybe gray and not black i want it to be in italics so it uh, would be a font property style font style italic and maybe i want it uh, to be a bit smaller font size uh, only 75 percent of course we need to have an idea of the properties that we want to apply from the that long list of properties but if we do that and we reload the page where is that he does it or oh, i need to redeploy because you see that the f the size the italics and the color of this uh, line change only that not not the one of the other paragraphs it's a p but only that p has been modified so this is this the uh, this is the id selector it only picks one element and of course all the elements inside of it right because of the inheritance so it's the p it's not just the p sorry was the but also this uh, text uh, also this link and also the text inside the link everything will have these styles applied hmm? then the other selector is which is the most important one is the class selector class uh, is used to tag uh, a set of elements not only one 
with a specific name hmm? so maybe class uh, is something for uh, I know imagine uh, a blog uh, with different posts uh, every post has a title an author and a body and there are many of them in the same page so you want all the titles to be formatted in the same way all the authors to be formatted in the same way all the bodied contents to be formatted in the same way so you could have maybe a paragraph with class title a paragraph a p with class author and a set of paragraph p with class body or post body or blog post body or whatever you want to call it and then you have a second post again we start with a paragraph a p with class title because it's the title the second one and so on so you, you want to apply <coughs> a given style or set of styles to all the elements uh, that have the same class so the syntax is very similar to the id uh, we use a class instead of id we use a dot instead of hash the difference the main difference is that id is unique in the page class may be repeated as many times as, uh, as you need so it's for marking groups of elements that sh that must share the same characteristics even if these groups of uh, of elements are not uh, hierarchically related like nested in, inside each other so different parts of the page must have the same style hmm? so i will apply the same class to them this is the, of course the most powerful most general of the of the three hmm? we could also apply a class that is unique to a single element so with class uh, you can simulate uh, the id and you can also give a class equal to the name of the element so with class we can also simulate the element so this is the the most powerful one the other ones are special cases that are nonetheless very useful hmm? and these are just the the basic selectors the three basic selectors then we have a lot of mechanisms for combining these selectors with a very simple syntax so we have the everything selector not very used an element selector we already saw that with an element called div the um, nesting selector div span matches all the span elements that are inside div so div that contains a span is matched this, the span is matched uh, div comma spans matches div and span so it's a sort of an or this and that this is an S. with the space is a nesting this the comma is not very used uh, div greater span means a, a span that is a child of a child of a child of a div so it's it's in somewhere somewhere inside the difference between the space and the greater sign is that the space should be an immediate child and the greater sign should be a transitive child so some element inside and uh, div plus span so the elements after so i want uh, maybe the first uh, paragraph after a title to be different so that would be h1 plus p the paragraph p after a title h1 and this style this style will apply only to the first paragraph that follows a title and so on and then we have the class selector the id selector and the combinations so we can have a as element dot class or element hash id and of course it will match only this id on that kind of element only those divs those elements that have this class so they combine they intersect their uh, selection rules and we have others that uh, they select uh, some element on the basis uh, of uh, the value of their attributes so we can become complex or the so-called in the right side pseudo selectors that uh, match some elements only if something is happening to them so i'm matching uh, i don't know uh, a text or an element only if the mouse is over it 
so the effect that you see when you go with the mouse over a specific element and that will change it will change in some way is because the browser will apply automatically these uh, pseudo selectors when you are interacting with the with the element so for example if we want uh, we can say that uh, our title will become green if the mouse is over it hmm? and so we uh, so if we reload the page You see that when the mouse goes there, the title will change color and so on. Hmm? So uh, it's not a real element. There's no real element called the hover. But every element becomes hover when the mouse is there or becomes visited via, via the link, so an A element. And you can, the browser knows whether the link has already been visited or not. Usually it changes color. If we don't like the colors, of the visited or unvisited links, uh, we can change them here, and so on. Hmm? So there are there is a language for selectors for combining like sort of regular expressions, and there is a long list of properties. Combine the two, you have a very wide uh, set of possibilities. Uh, so how to use all this power? So the suggestion is uh, use uh, meaningful HTML. So uh, try to express with the HTML only the structure of the document. Use proper titles, use proper elements for creating lists, uh, paragraphs, and so on. And mark with ID and class uh, the meaning of the specific parts of your page. So if there is a block of text that means something, give a class to it. Maybe when you're writing the HTML, you, you don't know yet, okay, how the layout will be, will, will be done. But you can mark uh, every element so that you have a sort of an anchor to, 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 uh, to apply some CSS rules to them. And use uh, invisible elements. There are two, uh, two very, well, really uh, very used elements that do nothing in, a, in the HTML standard. They are called div and span. By, their, by themselves, they are invisible, useless. They don't do anything. But they can be used to mark some portion of the page. The difference between div and span is their size. Div is, uh, marks uh, paragraphs of page. Span marks only fragments of text inside the paragraph. Okay, so the one is like selecting a block of lines or a block of tables and so on. And uh, so the div, uh, if you have a, a list of elements that sort of a menu, navigation menu, for example, you make it uh, as a list, uh, then you can wrap all of this into a div element saying all this block from here to there is the main navigation bar or is more or less the same as uh, marking the list itself as the navigation bar mm. depends on what you want to do uh, but in general when you have a portion of the page with a, with a specific role or meaning in the page just mark it with an id or a class use div and if you don't if later you will not apply any rule to this class or to this id the div uh, is just invisible it doesn't uh, change the page hmm? it, and then if you want to change something you can do that and the same yeah and uh, a section, and, uh, section. Yes. uh div is more so section was uh, i do i have it here no, section was added in HTML5, okay. okay? Like a sort of, a, uh, HTML introduced a lot of uh, semantic uh, blocks, uh, like section, footer, header, menu, and so on. All of them semantically are equivalent to div. Okay. They are all the same, 
just we give that name for, for helping us to remember the structure of the page okay they behave exactly in the same way so the suggestion of people designing HTML5 is instead of writing div uh, uh, class section just use the section tag so they had a look at what people were using and uh, they standardized that hmm? but technically they are actually equivalent and uh, span has the same uh, flavor but inside paragraphs so a span must begin and end inside the same line line meaning paragraph line or item line so the span cannot go over go over a, a new line maybe it can be wrapped in the browser because the browser is narrow but uh, uh, logical is the same logical line okay so if you want to mark uh, a fragment of text uh, you want this one to be formatted in a different way otherwise you would have it just uh, it's just text here published on so I, how can you identify the third and fourth and fifth word in this text hmm? it would not be possible so you have to put some markers saying this fragment has a special meaning to me and probably later we want to uh, format it in some different so in some specific way so you we you give semantics to your html by uh, marking with this text uh, this is what you were asking uh, with this div uh, with classes or spans with classes or ids in case they are only unique uh, in the different in the html page in the case you are using html5 which is uh, normal for today you already have some elements that are in some way predefined uh, uh that hmm, uh, play the same role actually hmm. uh, they are just containers so for example inside the footer you must have, have a paragraph with the text inside of it okay you're just marking the role of that paragraph they're not substitutes for the paragraphs uh, for the lists uh, for the tables and so on hmm. okay so we structure the page with a, a valid HTML, sound semantic HTML, uh, like, like they call it. Uh, there are okay. The complexity of style sheets uh, uh, comes when you are talking about uh, complex layouts. So right now, changing the font size, changing the font color is okay. The alignment, hmm, the background color are very easy uh things become complex when you're starting to align stuff uh, in on different columns uh, to space to overlay text on the images and so on so you need uh, to think uh, how how the browser actually does the layout of the page uh, it turns out that the layout model of uh, of html uh, is uh, based on the so-called box model so everything is a box a letter a single letter is a box a paragraph of text is a box uh, an image is a box a button is a box and every box uh, is actually the nesting of four different layers the actual content so if you're thinking of a button the button will be inside here and the size of the content is the size of the actual element painted in that area then around the content you have a padding area around the padding you have a border and around the border you have a margin so there are three nested uh, rectangles which is the difference within the tree the difference is that the padding usually shares the background with the content so it's an extension it's some border say some space around the content with the same background color of the content itself the margin shares the background with the with the surrounding elements so if you have an, a letter with a white background on a green page the padding will be white and the margin would be green because the color of the margin is taken from the surrounding environment for the nesting environment 
from the father element okay and the border has a color by itself you can change the color and maybe the lines uh, white uh, and the line dashing and uh, or dotting or shape uh, for the border so it's something that you can program or define independently for the others okay and every element has these values and on the browser you can see them what do you want for example if i find the inspector i can see on this paragraph of text uh, on this layout uh, it will tell me that uh, here on the right bottom right this is the size of the element the content with a padding on zero border zero margin 16 on top and bottom the margins on the left and the right are zero this is something that the browser applies uh, to keep the different paragraphs separated from each other by at least 16 pixels another property of the margins is that is that if you two elements uh, uh, touch the margins are merged so if i have an element with a top margin of 20 and uh, another element with a bottom margin of 15 then the two will be separated by only 20 the maximum of the two and not the sum 20 plus 16. Huh? Uh, so they, they give the space in between the different elements you see that uh, this is a paragraph because it, it extends all the white of the page 1500 pixels with zero margin if you go over it you see that the whole line sorry was the paragraph the whole line includes the content of the page and uh, the the yellow part uh, corresponds to the margin if i go to the image here so this one i click on it this image has uh, no borders no padding if i want i could add a border a line around the the picture so by default an image element doesn't have any margin a paragraph element does have some top and bottom margin a paragraph is a so-called block level element so it uses the whole full white of the page the image is an inline level element it only uses as much space it needs like uh, words words are all inline element element they are just put from uh, lay out, laid out from left to right uh, and they use the space they need a paragraph or a title are blocks so they take the f uh, full white a div is a block reserves a block a span reserves an inline element the button we have a button here also it's uh, you see that the button is as a size as a padding a left and right padding of eight pixels then a border of 2.4 pixels which is this, this thin line drawn around the border and these uh, eight pixels of padding are those that prevents the all of uh, the l of logging and the n of logging of touching the border you see that there's, there's a small space here and a small space there this space is the padding you see the same background as the main content but keeps the content separated from the borders then you have a border and then you have a margin in this case we have no margin as it's normal for inline elements inline elements don't need any margin hmm? so every every element uh, has this sort of uh, ru uh, layout rules that tell the browser when you have a, a, li a long list of elements how to position them with respect to each other so i have an element i have the next one where do i put it the layout algorithm is quite simple so take the content measure it add the padding add the border merge the margins and then if they are in line elements lay them from left to right if they are block level items lay them from top to bottom one paragraph after the other in vertical sense one word after the other in the horizontal sense 
so every element uh, behaves as a block element or an inline element and the layout algorithm uses them in this way so why are these text this box and this button on the same line because they are all inline elements why is this uh, signature here and this uh, form uh, one below the other because they are both p paragraphs and paragraphs are block level elements hmm? so it's simple until we need uh, to do something complex of course so these are just uh, some examples that we saw interactively and uh, so this is the the basic uh, uh, algorithm so the normal flow is uh, from left to right uh, inline elements uh, from top to bottom block elements except uh, when we want to modify this algorithm uh, if i want uh, we show before this picture maybe we want to have uh, some aside some column on the side so this this picture could not be generated with the normal algorithm because this side is neither at the right of the section nor at the bottom is not at the right not below it's a different column so we need a way to say okay this block must uh, be must use a different rule must float to the right why we continue lay laying out the other elements until we come to the footer and then the footer will close needs to close the floating of the side section hmm? and this can be done with the additional attributes okay this is the default algorithm um, where we can decide uh, where to position every block uh, with respect to the position to the default position and now it gets uh, complicated not difficult just complicated because there are a lot of different combinations now uh, i have a block that can be moved over a relative number of pixels respect to the basic position that it, it has it can be moved uh, over a given number of, of pixels with respect to the browser window, uh, the fixer, or it can be moved uh, with respect to the top left corner of the elements that contains this one. Hmm? So, for example, I can position this box, uh, this corner, relatively to the position that it would have by default. That is probably here relatively to the container that will be here or relative to the browser corner depending on whether i want something to be fixed uh, when i scroll i uh, i position it to uh, relative to the f uh, to the browser window mm -hmm. if i want this uh, i want i need to uh, anchor it at the beginning of this section so there will be a container element that will contain everything and we anchor this to the top of this element and to the right of the page mm -hmm. so it be, you, you need to combine uh, all of these uh, plus another attribute so these are examples of this positioning but I, I don't want to go into detail because we don't need to do it by hand plus uh, what happens to the rest of the text so where do we move this element and what happens to the rest of the text so that it floats to the right that it floats to the left so that all the text will wrap around it and when this text uh, will stop wrapping around it with a clear command to avoid stuff like that okay so you want to clear the the floating and you start again with a new paragraph hmm? there are very again basic low level primitives in layout uh, with which we can create any kind of fancy web pages they are quite complex to get right because you never know whether the the aside is longer or shorter by uh, to the sum of these two sections so what happens is this is very short does this article need to expand on the right or not 
Mm. So making a general rule is very complex. Mm. So us we usually don't do that. We use a framework with all of, uh, a list of uh, uh, many predefined rules. And, uh, uh, so before going to the framework, another useful property I want to show you is the display property. So displayed may be used uh, uh, for different purposes. Uh, one is uh, making elements invisible. If you want to prepare a part of the page, but you don't want to show it to the users, you make, you change the display property to none. And that part actually is removed from the page. Or another option is visibility, visibility hidden. In that case, it would still be there, occupy some space, but will be of the color of the background. Or you can have uh, um, inline or block uh, as the display property. So when I said before that the P and the div uh, are block level elements, and the H uh, ones, uh, the headings are block elements, while words, images, buttons are inline elements, this is just the default. You can decide that a list, uh, which is made of different items, usually it's a block element, you can transform it into an inline element. It will be still a list, but the, the element will be laid out from left to right, like in a menu. When you have a top menu in the navigation bar, it's a list of elements that are from left to right, instead of from top to bottom. Or you may have a span element that you want to give its line just to it, and you can transform it into a block element. So block and inline are not special values or special characteristics of, any, of, of some element, but just, they are just properties like the others. So you can modify them if you want to transform the default behaviors of some kind of elements. Okay, so these are the, the basic uh, rules, uh, like you know, writing assembler, some, uh, some code for, for getting what you want. Uh, actually, as I said, it's very difficult to write a complete set of rules to make a page look nice. Uh, and so we, we tend to use, uh, there are um, several available frameworks uh, that are actually are big families of rules that are already predefined for us. And one of the most famous ones uh, is the Bootstrap framework that was developed by Twitter. So the, the, the Twitter developers developed this booster for their own purpose and then they released it uh, for everybody to use with some documentation it's very uh, very common hmm? so it's an open source uh, framework uh, that apl allows applying some sort of modern styles uh, to our uh, web page and uh, it's also let's say customizable in the sense that uh, there is a default style the bootstrap style and you will recognize it because a lot of websites look alike uh, have the same fonts the same layout the same spacing uh, because they all use bootstrap but then you can apply a theme to modify this default behavior to so, so to make your own customized version of bootstrap if you really want uh, the important the more, in, in one important point is that bootstrap or any other framework by the way will take care of cross, cross browser issues for example how to do a rounded corner or a um, gradient background is very similar but not quite the same in different types of browsers especially so for more complex issues uh, you need to use different properties or in different ways uh, and you will get crazy making it work across all the bra uh, chrome and firefox and internet explorer uh, on windows on linux and uh, this is already taken care of by the framework and uh, you don't need to learn that's why i was quick uh, over the layout model you don't need to learn all the quirks and details uh, of the layout model because it has a very simplified way of lay laying out elements so let's go to Boost bootstrap and that is on this website getbootstrap.com we if you go to the website it will uh, instruct you to download uh, version 4, 4.1.0, which is the current version, five minutes, uh, 
one hour ago so I, I assume it's not changed or you can go back to the previous version which is 3 3.3.7 which is the current one we will use and i suggest you to use the version 3 and not 4 for two reasons one version 4 is extremely more complex to use they it's totally redesigned in a incompatible way but it's a much more modular way it's very more, much more flexible it takes more time to learn uh, the version 3 is actually very easy to use, much easier to use. Mm -hmm. The learning curve is very minimal. Second reason, there is a Flask extension that already includes this one, version 3. The Flask extension has not been updated to Bootstrap 4 yet, so unless you want to do that by hand and you want to use this Flask extension, you can stick with uh, version 3. But it's more than enough for us, okay? Then if you want to venture in Bootstrap 4, you are on your own and um, I won't help you I won't be able to um, so how does bootstrap work bootstrap uh, is a CSS library so what it does is to define a lot of classes and ed every class uh, mm, con correspond to a specific effect uh, or style that you want to you want to may apply to have an element or to a portion of your page so you just have to learn the, these classes and apply the class attribute where you want to achieve a given effect what are the properties that bootstrap actually modifies is something you don't care any longer you just know which class you must use from the bootstrap provided classes to achieve a given result and of course these classes may be combined this is something that he didn't say I did that before that the class attribute can have more than one value class a space b space c and you apply you are applying class a and b and c to the same element so the same element may normally have more than one classes the id of course cannot because it must be unique hmm? and uh, and so uh, the classes defined by bootstrap are very modular you can apply more than one and then the effects will combine and it will give you standard classes for the CSS elements plus uh, what they call components so there are fragments of HTML with the corresponding styles and classes that create not just one single element but one functionality like the drop, drop down menu for example there's not just one element for doing the menu it's a combination of a list uh, and um, and the title and they give you these they call them components uh, the fragments of html to be used uh, and the corresponding classes to transform them into what you want to look hmm. and they are mobile first so they are thought uh, in general if you're using framework your website will be nearly ready to be visited both on a browser on a computer sorry and uh, on a mobile browser because uh, uh, most of the classes will uh, adapt themselves uh, to the white of the viewport of the browser window how to use how to use bootstrap it, okay it's very easy you may you need to include the, in every page three different files the bootstrap library the the team that you want to use for example the default one and some a small javascript library that is used for some effects uh, the bootstrap guys already provide us with this cut and paste code to include in our page so if we want we can just paste this in our html pages and uh, we will download the bootstrap library from from them distribution network from the internet okay otherwise you can download these three files save them locally locally and then load these files from the static directory instead of the, uh, of the um, of their distribution network hmm? they suggest to use the distribution network because if there are many different websites that use bootstrap then those files will be very likely already on the cache of the browser of your users because your users already visited some ad some other website that used those uh, um, styles those libraries so in our case 
this this all in this uh, remember to check whether you are using version 3 you just have to copy these lines and put them into our template okay just copy and paste i kept this this personal style sheet because they, they can also you know the, the cascading mechanism also tells me that i can add new styles that don't they won't make any conflict and if i reload the well very few stuff will change so i reload this so there was a small modification so that uh, you see that probably there is a zero margin on the left uh, while before i had a small margin and the font is now sans serif instead of uh, times uh, with serif uh, and the, spa the spacing is a bit modified but it's not it's not mm, complete yet no we, we just loaded the library this zero margin is not nice what bootstrap does actually it resets the browser defaults to something you can then build on easier more easily the browser by default has a small margin on the left so if you want to make a full white picture in your background uh, you cannot because you need first to um, delete this margin and then apply something else uh, and bootstrap already gets rid uh, of the annoyances because then you can define your own styles but then you need to, to, to do that um, and if you want there are already some a lot of uh, different examples like this one to start with and you see that uh, there is the inclusion of bootstrap and then you have your body and inside the body you can use the different components uh, and you have uh, examples here to copy for example this one is a page made with bootstrap you look at the source and see I, how they did this the, the content and you you see that they are using some classes navigation bar container button icon bar and so on that are the specific booster classes that give this effect the most important one is container all of your content should be inside container that will fix the margin issues so for example we, we didn't do that in our case we didn't know but all the body should be inside a container all of our content because the background doesn't have any margin but then container will reintroduce it and uh, we reload it and you see that we have a usually we have a wi very wide screen so with but we and we don't want the whole page to occupy all the whole white because it's difficult to read so it gives you nice margins there if you want to use the whole margin then you don't use the class container instead you can use the class container fluid that uses the whole white no? so this is all in the bootstrap documentation uh, how do you find about all these classes actually here you have uh, this css menu here that gives you the examples uh, for example if you want to change the buttons so i went to the css here so these are all the basic styles i want to format some buttons go to the buttons and we tell you that the elements a or button or input can be modified with these classes button button default button default and so on so we'll change the shape of the button it's different from sorry it's different from this one hmm? it's uh, 
more modern i would say or i can modify the the button with the button primary will be, will be blue button info will be red button warning will be um, uh, yellow and so on so just by adding this class you are redesigning totally your buttons hmm? so in our case maybe the login button would be a primary button so instead since we have uh, bootstrap loaded we just modify this one we reload and uh, okay it's a modern button and also all the other form elements forms are here and we'll format form in this way there are vertical forms wide forms and you mark them with uh, all textual elements uh, with form control so you must apply the class form control to your all your inputs if you have labels like email address password rob them in form group so you have form group label input form control second form group label input form control like in this code here form group label input class form control so if you use this html syntax actually you will get this if you want to have a narrow form like this one then the form will be marked with form in line so initially the form doesn't have any class you have the classes for the form elements and by default it's all vertical if you want to lay it out if, you don't, if, if you don't have a lot of fields you want to lay it down horizontally you just modify the form element by saying this is, a, is a, an inline form and all the rest is, is identical form group uh, form control like before identical but then the, the main form element says please do that in line and not as blocks and so you have this, uh, this sort of, uh, of layout so you can choose very easily and also the you see that uh, the text inputs becomes rounded uh, and the gray instead of black and so on a lot of nice things that make this the the, the, the website look uh, look <laughs> more modern hmm? and uh, everything for tables uh, formatting tables in html is very uh, boring you have uh, all the striping and the columns uh, and the hovers on the lines uh, and the alternating colors uh, or whatever all the effects that are uh, usually available uh, can be picked from this uh, long list of CSS uh, uh, classes and if you want to do something more complex you go into the components menu when you have something a bit more complex because it requires also some HTML not just CSS for example all the glyphs on the page uh, you just create uh, uh, one uh, one empty span with this class and then it will create uh, this icon for example or and there are a lot of them or uh, I don't know what can we see uh, this is very nice the jumbotron is a very big block that you have at the beginning a sort of a div laid out on top of everything else uh, uh, with, with with very large fonts uh, that are modified for your uh beginning of the page uh, you know the progress bars uh, to be displayed uh, the the drop downs for creating menus you see that creating a drop down is very easy because you only have a uh, look at the html just a list of items then you need to put the href and the class right of course uh, 
and uh, you have a title somewhere there which is a button there the, this button has the name the button actually correspond to this little arrow this button with the name drop down and then the list uh, of the voices of the items it just as a list and all of this formatting is done for you you can add something that opens and closes uh, that uh, have, has uh, disabled items there are dividers and so on so a lot of uh, button groups uh, buttons that are collapsed together that can be selected uh, uh, one at a time more than one combinations so you you need to spend some time you know, in looking at what you are searching badges are very useful also uh, yeah when you want to have some notifications say how many messages are pending and so on very very simple uh, but they can be inserted into buttons into links into text uh, everywhere okay so this is the library we can use and uh, uh we also have uh, even if today we won't have time to to, to look in, into it uh, uh, a simplified way of using bootstrap inside a flask application so actually we don't have we don't need to paste all of these lines here because you know it gets boring that every time every new template because i only modify the index here but actually these modifications should be done for linking bootstrap linking the style sheet should be done on a, done on every um, template uh, the flask bootstrap uh, the, the an extension called flask bootstrap already includes all this text for me so i will only start from the body of, the, of my page okay so instead of creating the, of pasting all this uh, bootstrap stuff into the every template we create we will use we learn will be monday probably uh, to use to le we learn to use the bootstrap flask uh, extension and uh, our page will become much simpler at the same time okay um, before monday i will also prepare i will publish probably tomorrow some an, an, a new reading uh, when we can start uh, learning something about uh, the something more about the http protocol that we will need uh, to do the interaction so that you can read the simpler things uh, and we can in class we can go deeper hmm? okay thank you for tonight <laughs>